Okay, Surendra, you are there? Surendra? Yes, yes, I'm here. So please start. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Dean, sir. I think uh, it is, there was technical problem who ended the meeting. Uh, Dr. Loan, uh, welcome to you. Thank you. Um, it's my pleasure, actually. Thank you. Yeah, so before you start your presentation, let me just introduce yourself. You are? Okay. Uh, Okay, she so will be talking today about the effective way of giving feedbacks to the student. Like uh, giving feedback is uh, the common debate these days because some people prefer to give feedback early, uh, some uh, immediate feedback, some other, like this. So she will be talking on this. Uh, so Dr. Luan undertook her uh, postgraduate studies in University of Canberra, Australia, and soon I Surnari University of Technology, Thailand. She is now a lecturer at Department of English, Faculty of Education and Educational Innovation, Kalajin University, Thailand. Uh, before, when she was in Vietnam, she used to be a university lecturer and English instructor at Southeast Asia, Asian Ministry of Education organization, regional training centers, and an educator for Vietnamese lecturer awarded with the government scholarship for their overseas higher studies and teachers of English in the National Language English Language Project 2020. Dr. Lon specializes in <coughs> teacher education, writing corrective feedbacks, general analysis, English written discourse, second language writing instruction and research, academic writing, ESL, ESP, professional writing with Gender based approach, citation and reporting verbs. Uh, if we talk about the publication, so her publications on these topic can topic can be found in high impact peer reviewed international journals. Uh, besides uh, serving as a reviewer, uh, an editor or editor in chief for the Asian EFL journals, the Asian ESP journals, ESP Today journal, and others. She has served as a chair and committee member of thesis defense in Thailand, a thesis examiner for PhD thesis for universities in Australia and Vietnam, a supervisor for TSOL master's student in Vietnam and co-supervisor for a PhD candidate in Iran. She has also been a keynote, plenary and concurrent, concurrent speaker at many international conferences adjust for international English speech context for Rajavat and Asian universities. And uh, she is sometimes invited to give special lectures for prestigious, uh, sorry, postgraduate students and lectures in Bangladesh, Indonesia, Thailand, and Vietnam. Uh, so today she is here with the issue of feedback. So let's welcome Professor Luan Professor Luan, it's up to you. Okay, good evening uh, and namaste. Um, uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Sir Surenda, for your introduction. And I, I would also like to thank uh, Sir Dian Josie and the whole organizing team for making this virtual conference happen. Uh, because without uh, your um, hard work, um, devotion, and time, I, I, could, I, could, I could not stay in touch. Uh, and in order to learn and to share with many colleagues and uh, scholars in Nepal and in many other countries. So once again, thank you very much, Sadie and Josie and the whole team for making uh, this happen. I thank you for the, uh, uh, the, the sharing and learning opportunity. Thank you very much. So uh, can I get started now? Yes, Lon. Yes, Lon. Uh, yes, okay. ma'am, you can. So be before I, I start, I, I really uh, um, wanted to know how are you doing there? How are you feeling there? How are you there during this uh, social quarantine time? So now, I, I, in order to let me know how you are doing there, you can join me. Oh, wh why can I move my slide? Hello? You can move. Uh, I cannot now. I don't no. know what. I cannot uh, move my slide now. Uh, what should I do? Sorry, technical problem. There is a technical problem from there only. When I when I 
into it and then it pop 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 you can do one thing you can just uh, stop sharing and again reshare okay yeah Let's try whether I can do it or not. I still cannot. I still cannot move my slide. Yeah, it's not working, I think. Oh, okay. So here, here's okay. it. Okay. So everyone, uh, can you see the a few wheels on the screen I share with you? So I would love to, to know how are you doing there. So in order to do that, you just select the words on the few wheels on the screen. And uh, the words that describe your feeling, uh, how you are feeling during this cell quarantine time and then uh, type the words into the chat box, uh, the Zoom chat box here, and so I can know how you are doing there. Okay, uh, are you ready, everyone? Hello, are you ready? Uh, One okay. is ready. Yeah, we are ready, uh, we are ready. Yes. Okay, and how can I check uh, where's your message? Hey, oh, okay, here. Uh, so again, uh, let me know how you are doing there, how you are feeling there, by selecting the words on the few wheels I share on the screen and then you enter the words in the chat box so I can know how you are doing there. Okay. Let's see uh, how are you doing there. Okay. Namaste. Joyful. Good. Good. Uh, fearful. Oh, so sorry. No one wants this situation to happen. I understand that feeling. Happy. Oh, only three of you. Share your feeling to me. Free. Oh, free. Free from work. You do not need to go to work, right? Happy, okay, good. Frustrated, oh yeah, sure. Inspired, overwhelmed, mm, thank you. Okay, thank you. Self-confident, oh good, that's good. Maybe because of the virtual conference. Courageous, good, that's good. Okay, so I think that's enough. Thank you very much. Thank you very much for letting me know how you are doing there and how you are feeling there. Uh, yeah, we, we, we actually did not expect to be in such a difficult situation right now, but we really hope that the situation will be soon over in order for us to get back to our normal routine. So now uh, let us uh, get back to my presentation. Uh, should not move the screen. Okay, so here. Uh, can everyone see my screen? But how can I move myself here in order for you to, oh, okay, in order for you to see my home screen. Okay, so, um, so here's the topic I, I would love to share with you today. So in today uh, sharing, I, I would love to share with you the us approach. The us approach is feedback approach, or we say feedback strategy that I found effective in um, especially uh, implementing it with my uh, Thai student in teaching them how to write in English. And uh, before sharing, I, I will briefly review the literatures on, oh, cannot move the slide again. Hello. Okay. So before sharing um, this approach uh, to you, it means that's the key topic of my presentation today. I will briefly review the literatures on why we need to provide the feedback on the student or why we need to correct the student writing errors, when to correct, which error to correct, which feedback to revise, how to correct the student errors, writing errors, and who will do the correcting. So um, now I would like to invite you to join me on uh, Mentimeter.com. Everyone, I think you are familiar with Mentimeter, right? I hope you, you are familiar with that uh, through this virtual conference. So now, uh, use, your, use this on your phone, uh, shop for menti.com, and then you enter the code, and then here we go. Okay, let me open it. Okay, I would love to you to share your, your views on the question, when uh, to correct the student error, which error to correct, how to correct, who would do the correcting, and why do we need to do such a thing? Okay, let's get going. So uh, shop for menti.com everyone and then you enter the code uh, 633558 and then here we go. You can type. You can type your answer here. The first question is that why do we try to correct student writing errors? Okay, please uh, type your answer in. Hello. Yeah. Uh, I don't know. I saw like my screen sharing the post. Yeah. Everything is visible. I think they're doing it. Oh, yeah. oh, I saw it now. To teach correct answer. Okay, good. Thank you. Okay, please join it, everyone. Go to menti.com and enter the code. And then here we go. To make them competent. Good. To, yeah, we need to correct code to help the student to be competent. Uh, for testing. Oh, really? To help the student uh, to deal with the test. Okay. 
And any any other reason? Please type in your answer to provide the feedback to. Oh, many. Okay, now for testing for bringing confidence in something to make them competent, to make them accurate, to make them capable, to teach them the correct answer. Good to encourage them. Good working friendly with them. Good to uh, what else? Learn better. Yes, to bring accuracy, to make them alert of the. What else? To to learn better. Okay. Yes, and uh, to improve and motivate them. Good. To what else? To motivate, to improve, to get them to learn better. Okay, so lots of reason now. I think oh, very good to improve the writing. Seem to be the. The most common reason uh, that's you join, the one you join who give us. So uh, we have 30 participants to share the idea here. So as you see on the screen, uh, to improve student writing tend to be the most important reason for us to um, provide the feedback on the student. Okay, so uh, for the next quite five questions. Ma'am, this is not so, this is not visible on the screen, the questions. Hello, you cannot see it? Maybe let me. Let I stop and I say it again. So sorry, well, something going wrong. Okay, technical problem. Okay, net. Okay, can you see my screen now, everyone? Yes, yes. Yes, we okay. can. Yes, 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 great, great, yes. Yeah, that, that's what I was reading to you on. Okay, those are the, the reasons you share with me. Now, 43 um, friends who share with uh, uh, me the reason why we need to correct the student writing error. And, and can you see here? we. We see that to improve their writing tend to be the most common reason that you share with me. Okay, yeah, thank you very much. Okay, so I think that question is enough. So now for the next five question on who, when, how, okay, I, I would like you to do, um, to answer the question because they are multiple choice. So you have 30 seconds to do each. So that's why I let you to finish them and then I will go through your answer later. Okay, so now are you ready everyone? Yes. Okay, let's go to the next.
very much uh, for your uh, sharing your opinion on this subtopic I will talk about in today's presentation. So now let's get back to uh, your presentation uh, one by one. So for the first uh, for the first question, we already went through uh, this. And now for the second questions, the correcting student writing error works, and it can be seen here. All of you, uh, 14, um, 14 of you who join to answer say that yes. Okay, isn't it that you keep confident that when you correct a student uh, writing is help? Okay, let's see. Okay, now uh, the next one, uh, the next question is that, uh, when should we correct student writing errors? And my options given to you are early in the, the, the writing process, I mean in the early draft, in the later draft, or whenever error will found. So only seven out of 20 of you say whenever error will found, it means you correct every draft. And uh, 12 of you said that later in the later draft, not in the early draft, because the early draft said only by eight uh, of you. Okay, so now let's move on to the next uh, questions uh, to see uh, how you answer and what you share in here. So uh, for uh, 27 of you share your opinion on which error should we correct. And uh, four of you say all, and uh, yeah, 23 of you, a lot of you say, or almost all of you say some, just some errors. So some, which are some, which error to correct? Okay, let's see how we deal with such a things. And then uh, the next question is that when, how, how should we correct the student writing error? And I give you four options. By using the red pen, only three of you say yes. Uh, and 14 of you say by using the correction code and symbol and actually this um, strategy is um, reported or was reported to be used by almost half of you who joined to answer the question. And by using electronic feedbacks um, were reported by one, it means that you also use some uh, techniques, I mean that uh, high tech in uh, checking the student writing. And uh, by talking to the student, it means you use the oral oral strategy in, in providing feedback to students and uh, this is shared by 11 of you. Okay, thank you very much. So now uh, we move on to the next uh, answer. I mean the question to, to the next uh, question. So who should do the correcting? Actually, this is the last question in my uh, Mentimeter. Who should do the correcting? Wow, interesting. Uh, 18 out of 27 of you said that uh, own teachers, peers, and students have to take the responsibility for the correcting. Mm -hmm. Okay, and five, you say the student themselves. One said teacher, oh. So you mean that uh, teacher do not need to do this job? Because only one of you said that the teacher should do the correcting and three safe here. Okay, so uh, thank you very much everyone uh, for uh, sharing your view on this um, question. And I, I asked um, you about uh, your view on the uh, how can I come back to my slide? Okay, here. Uh, I asked you to share your view on this uh, topic. It's just because I think it's good to have you to understand the us approach I'm going to share with you uh, later. So now, uh, let's come to um, my presentation. Now we get started, Ruth. Ruth Star now. Okay, so now, uh, before because my uh, sharing today is how to provide effective feedback. So the question is, what is feedback? So I think uh, you know the answer. I think you know what feedback is. Because in general, uh, feedback is defined as the information given uh, on someone's performance in order for them to improve it. But amongst um, a couple of uh, definition of feedback given in the literature, I really love this feedback by Hattie and Timberley. Uh, hello. Oh my goodness, it seems like the, the screen stopped sharing, right, everyone? Hello? Can, can you yes. see can you see my slide now, everyone? Yes, yes, uh, yes I feel like yes, sometimes yes. the screen stopped yes, yes. sharing uh, unexpectedly, so I did have noticed that. Hello? Yes, yes. yes we can see. Yes, ma'am, you can Hello. go. The yes. screen is visible. Uh, do you see my screen now, everyone? Yes, yes. Yes, yes. yes Yes, okay, thank you. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, Sometimes the, the screen stops sharing unexpectedly without my notice, so sorry. So again, uh, among many uh, definitions of feedback, uh, I, I really love the definition by uh, of feedback by Hattie and Timberley 2007. Uh, why? Because in their definition, uh, you can see on the diagram on my screen, uh, feedback 
it is not just about the assessment, but we also need to uh, include the learning goals and the guidance in order to help the student to act upon the feedback. And so according to uh, Hattie and Timberley, feedback is the evidence the teacher give in order to show the student how they, where they are going. It means what learning, what learning objective they need to achieve and how well, how progress they make in relation to the learning objective. And also the guidance we provide in order for them to close the gap, to, to reach their learning uh, goals. So how they, they close the gap, how they can reach the learning objective. So feedback is not just feedback, but feedback involves feed up and uh, feed forward. I, I really like this definition. It's just because this definition characterize the element of the effective feedback that I'm going to share with you today. Okay, so now uh, let's move on to the next question, everyone. Uh, oh, cannot move my screen. Oh, that's wrong. Okay, so the next question is, what is the focus of feedback? So um, when we give the feedback on the student writing, so what should we focus on? Do we need to focus on correcting their grammar only or what else? So in order to have the answer to this question, we also need to see uh, what makes a good writing. So I think you generally agree with me that in order to have the good writing, we do not just need the accuracies in the use of the language in terms of like vocabulary, uh, sentence structures or uh, grammar. But we uh, also need to have the clear logical arguments which are supported by um, relevant uh, evidence from the source material. Uh, so the arguments or the content should also be organized according to the convention in the discipline. So only three elements, content, organization, and language together to make a piece of writing good. So that's why in providing the feedback, we also need to focus on these three things. Because our purpose in giving the feedback to the student is to help them to have the good writing, good piece of writing. So that's the focus of our feedback. So now let's move on to the next question. And the correcting student writing error works. And uh, I think you still remember the answer uh, on the Mentimeter you gave me. All of you say yes. Okay, are you sure? Uh, that uh, giving uh, feedback on student writing help them? Okay, uh, actually uh, you're, you are so confident in saying that because in the literatures, uh, although there's a lot of studies supporting the effectiveness of uh, correcting student writing, but there are also ample of evidence or research showing that correcting student writing doesn't work. And here, let's look at, at the reason they advise us uh, to continue correcting student writing or to stop correcting student writing from uh, two sides. I mean, that from research supporting the effectiveness of correcting student writing and research is again, correcting student writing. And for those who support, Correcting student writing says that we need, we teachers need to continue because that's what the student expect. And uh, yeah, it is true that uh, whenever the student do the writing, they really want uh, their teacher to check up on, on their work. And uh, not only the student, their parent, the sponsor, or even the school or the stakeholder also expect the teachers to do the checking up on the student. And if the teacher do not check or do not provide the feedback on their student writing, they may think that they are not doing the job properly. And uh, besides that, um, research also show that when the teacher give the student the feedback, the student keep it or have it as a kind of the record in order for them to work on the areas they need to improve in order to be better. And uh, research also show that students who receive the feedback on their writing will become the better writers in the long run in the futures. So those are the reason uh, who support correcting the student writing error work like you, you say yes. Okay, maybe these are the reason. But let's see what the re research in the literature say that no, we should not, we should not correct the student writing. It's just because it doesn't work. Okay, what reason they advise us or what reason they give in asking us not to do it. So uh, they say that usually students ignore the teacher correction. They may even throw the teacher, um, throw their paper uh, away after they receive uh, it back from the teachers with the feedback. And they also say that the student learn nothing from the teacher correction. It just become, we don't understand. The teacher uh, command or feedback on their writing. And uh, 
some study also even say that it is harmful. It's not good for the student. It's demotivate the student. It's just because when the students see a lot of red marks on their writing, they think that their writing is very bad. So this discourages them uh, in learning writing. And the, the, the key person who is strongly, again, a correcting student uh, writing is a stress cost because he said that it's a waste of time. It's a harmful. OK, so now my question for you. Do you agree with him? Because when you answer my uh, question, all of you say that it's work. But now, trust costs say that, no, it doesn't work. It's a harmful. This is a waste of time. So what do you think? Please uh, type yes or no into the chat box and to let me know you agree with trust costs. Yes? It doesn't work? Yes? Yes? Please? Yes, yes, when is yes. Overcorrection may harmful. Oh, huh? It depends. Depends on what? Okay, anything else? Uh, what do you say? Ignore the correction. It means that, oh, it means that you use the one who, uh, who, who do not support correcting student writing error. Depend on the student, depend on what? The purpose of teaching, like what? Yes, you agree with stress card? Only the serious one who uh, should be corrected. Serious, what are the serious mistakes should be corrected? Agree. Agree mean you think we should not correct because correct the student writing because it's harmful. It's a waste of our time. Accuracy, uh, depending on upon the level of the student, the content, the context, correcting is essential. May correction method is not effective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so thank you very much. And now let's get back to this topic. Just because say it's harmful, it's a waste of time, but we need to be clear. What he say is not good, is not about the feedback. What he says is not good about the correction. He, he doesn't have any objections to the teachers providing the feedback on the student content, organization, or the literacy of their writing. But what he objects is to grammar correction. So what do we learn from his argument? So from his argument, we, we, we learn that if we focus our feedback on only the language you of the student is waste of our time. It's a harmful. It doesn't work. The student may not learn much, or the student writing cannot be improved. So that's what his argument stated in his work. I think the survey no work, uh, 1996, uh, and that's what we also learned something from his argument. Actually, he's uh, the one who triggers a lot of um, meticulous study on written corrective feedback in the field. And now uh, let's come to the next question that I also asked you, when to correct the student writing errors. So if I did not mistaken uh, when to correct the student writer, how many of you say? Uh, 12 of you say in the final rafts, and uh, seven say, no, more, more than the higher number early raft, and the other ones say uh, whenever error will fall. Okay, so majority, majority of you say that we should correct the student writing in the later draft. Okay, so now let's let's check what the literature said. Okay, the literature advise us to correct the student errors in every draft. This means that whenever you ask a student to write, you have to check, no matter how many drafts you would like them to write. But they advise us to central our focus on different aspect in checking the early draft or the later draft. So what did they say? They said that if we uh, check the student writing on the early draft, our main focus should be on the global errors. The global errors refer to uh, the student uh, idea, the student argument, the organization of the argument, rather than on the grammar. But in the later draft, we more focus should be given to the local errors. So it means that we, we help them to uh, make their writing accurate after their content organization uh, good. So I think their advice is logical just because uh, we, we know that the student final drafts are nothing like their first draft. So what's the point uh, if we uh, try to correct their grammar in the early drafts instead of focusing on uh, ensuring that they have the appropriate answer to the writing question, they know how to organize their idea in an uh, appropriate way. Okay, so now let's move on to the next question to see what the literature say come to compare with your question. Which error to correct? So now let me uh, come back to uh, your answer. Okay, uh, so uh, out of uh, 27 of you say, 23 of you say that we just correct some. Okay, why some and what are the some? 
Okay, so now let's check what the literature say advise or advise us to do. So uh, they said that we need to prioritize our feedback. So I think from the reverse slide, you already uh, have a general idea of how we prioritize our feedback. Um, they said that we need to uh, focus on the global errors first, because the purpose of writing is uh, to, to share the writer's intended message to the writer. So if the error interrupts the understanding of the error, those are the ones we need to correct first. And then if our student make the common mistake again and again, or if um, many of our students in the class make the same mistake, those are the mistakes we need to focus on, need to address in uh, checking on their writing. And another types of error we need to put our priorities on is that the stigmatizing error. The stigmatizing error is the kind of errors the native or the, how can we say, um, the, the native English writer would not make. And usually this kind of errors uh, is caused by the influence, the interference of the first language. Like um, for my Thai student, for example, uh, in, in Thai language, they have no punctuation. They have uh, no capitalization. It's been that whenever they write in Thai, they, they write continuously with the full stop or a comma. Or even when they write, uh, they mention the rubber names, but their, their words are not capitalized. So those are the errors should be corrected uh, by uh, the teachers if we know our student characteristic or our student uh, common error uh, that are influenced by their first language. Okay, so now uh, let's move on to the next question, everyone. How to correct the errors? And uh, let's see, uh, what did you say? How to correct the yes, uh? So uh, red pen only three. Uh, 14 say that using the correction code and error is majority if you say this. And talking to student, it means you use oral strategies. And then the last one, you electronic. Okay, so now uh, let's look at um, the feedback strategy, uh, or we say the typology of uh, feedback uh, strategy summarized by early 2009. And can, can you see here? Uh, we have many ways, I mean, that the teachers can have many uh, strategies in providing the feedback to our student writing. The first pair of strategy, it can be seen here, is the focus, uh, unfocused feedback. Uh, another name for them is uh, selective or comprehensive feedback. Um, respectively. So focus feedback refer to the feedback the teacher directed at one kind of error or maybe a certain uh, number of kinds of error. This depends on the writing task or um, maybe the focus of uh, the writing. Uh, and uh, for the unfocused or comprehensive feedback is the kind of uh, is the kind of feedback a writing on every error found in the student writing. And the next uh, pair of um, feedback strategy the teacher can use is direct feedback or indirect feedback. So direct feedback means um, the teacher provide a correction on the student errors. Indirect feedback means um, the teacher did not provide a, or do not provide a correction, but the teacher just indicate that errors are made. Okay, by maybe underlying or maybe using the, 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 the error code in order to indicate a student that they make the error there. Okay, so uh, we can also use um, the meta linguistic strategies in providing the feedback to the student. And for this uh, strategy, uh, the teacher can explain the why the error was made to the student. It can be seen in my example. And uh, one of you also mentioned about using electronic feedback. And I, I think you know some of the applications we can use or tool we can use like track changes, Grammarly, or screencasting, or nowadays, uh, if British culture want to develop the application called uh, write and improve. I think uh, those are the kind of application we can use in providing the feedback. So uh, come back to your uh, answer. You say that using uh, symbol code, it means that you use the in, uh, sorry, what is it? Uh, indirect feedback strategies in providing the student writing errors. Okay, so um, the next, the next um, slide uh, will be some other general guidelines that uh, the literature also provide us in using uh, indirect or direct feedback. So let's have a look at them. So um, they said that we teachers can use direct uh, feedback. It means that we give the correction on a student error. So when they say that we can use this strategy 
to uh, treat the untreatable errors. Untreatable errors refer to the errors that has no rule that cannot be explained by the rule, like work choice or um, writing style. So those are the kind of error the teacher need to give the correction on when the student make the mistake. And another type of error the teacher can use the direct uh, feedback strategies a um, error from the student make from the student uh, of a lower language proficiency because the student of a lower language proficiency are unable or are, are not at the right uh, stage to, to, to decode or in order to fix the error of their writing. That's what they advise. And for indirect feedback strategy, uh, it can be used uh, for treatable error. It means the errors um, are over by runes or uh, on the linguistic error that the student have already learned or the errors revived by the more advanced uh, student. Okay, so uh, they even also advise us to combine these two strategies depending on our writing task, our writing requirement or the focus in the writing. So, uh, so far, um, after we review the literatures on what to do, how to do, uh, how to correct the student writing, so are you uh, confident or do you feel that such suggestion are clear to you in order for you to derive the feedback that um, useful that's useful to your student. Uh, actually, uh, for me, uh, when I uh, study uh, this literature, I, I felt confused. I feel puzzled because I, I did not know which feedback strategy or how much feedback uh, would work best for my student because my student have their own characteristic. So which one should I use? They advise, okay, direct feedback can be used for this kind of error, another kind of error, but how about my student? How, which feedback should I use? How can I use? So I was still very confused um, after reading this and I felt like my um, pen taking effort in responding to the student error would be would not be uh, very cost effective. It's kind of waste of time as mentioned by just cost. So um, that's why I came up with uh, this approach the approach that I, I, I mentioned to you from the beginning, the ask approach. And uh, this approach, um, first I will review, uh, no, not review, I will show you what it is, and then I will show you how I applied it in, in my teaching context in order for you to have some idea in modifying your feedback strategy in order to uh, make your feedback useful to, to your student. Okay, so now let's get started. What, what does it mean? Uh, the ask approach. The ask approach here refer to the student attitude, the attitude in the student. Because we teachers, writing teacher, when we provide the feedback, we believe that it would help like, like what you you gave, you share with me in on the Mentimeter, right? All of you, even though 14 of you joined to answer that question, but all of you say that, yes, it's work. Yes, we teachers <laughs> think it's work, but our student may not think that way. So that's why our job is to help the student to see the benefit of the feedback. Because when they see the benefit, the usefulness of it, they will make use of it, they will make their learning happen. Okay. And the other thing, uh, strategy and the knowledge, uh, those are the things that the teacher need to help the student in order for them to act upon the feedback. Because in the, in the literature, uh, we, re, we went through uh, in the reverse section, we see that the literature say that, oh, it's a waste of time, it's a harmful, and children do not understand the teacher correction, teacher man. It was just because the teacher did not help the student with the strategy in order to act upon the feedback, in order to uncope the feedback. And how to act? Because they may need some help in order for them to correct, but the teacher did not provide them enough. So that's maybe the reason uh, that make the um, uh, that, that prevent the effectiveness of the feedback activities. Okay, so now uh, let's go into more detail for each element here. So for the first one, as I mentioned to you, is very important because the, the student believes, the student positive toward the feedback, uh, more or less decide the effectiveness of feedback, whether they can learn from our feedback or not, whether our feedback help them or not. Okay, so um, we, we should help them by this way or that way, usually by training or by showing them that feedback help them. So the student need to understand the need to act upon the feedback and they also need to see the value of acting upon the feedback. They need to know that they are the only person who can make their writing better. So that's why they need to take more responsibility. 
they need to uh, respond, react, to do something to the feedback provided on their writing in order to make their writing better. Okay, so now and the second thing that we need to um, do in order to ensure that our feedback effective is a strategy. As the literature said, the student um, did not know how to do or maybe didn't understand the teacher feedback. So we need to help them to have the strategy, the skill, analyzing skill in order to act upon the feedback. So they need to have the strategy to unpack the feedback and then to act upon the feedback. And we also need to train them to have the skill to give the feedback on someone writing, especially the peer writing, because they are working on the same writing task. So they need to learn how to revive the feedback on their friend's writing. Because when they revive the feedback on their friend's writing, they may become aware of the assessing criteria, and they also become aware of the requirement of that writing. So when they become aware of such kind of uh, assessing criteria, so they they will they, they would be able to um, self edit their own writing. So that's why the teacher also need to help them how to work effectively with their their peer. And I, I told you uh, for this we need to train the student, uh, maybe through the tutorial, maybe the discussion, or we can even provide the, the actual practice. Uh, in order for them to have the skill in acting upon the feedback. Okay, now let's move on to the last element of the us approach that I find effective as I mentioned to you. So um, when we provide the feedback on the student, uh, we do not just show them what is right, what is wrong, but we also need to follow up with our support. So what should we support? We need to support through our assessment task. For example, you would like your student to practice with uh, analyzing skill in providing feedback on their friend's writing, but the student may say, oh, I didn't know I'm not good as my friend. How can I do that task? They may refuse to do it. So in order to ensure that the student will take action on the feedback, um, when their friend provide the feedback on them or when the teacher give them the feedback, they need to do something. The teacher need to think about how they assess the feedback, how they assess the student revised version. This means that the teacher can provide support, maybe uh, take some action in order to ensure that the student take responsibility for their own learning. And um, the, the, the knowledge can also go through the follow-up activity. Because when we assess our student writing, it means that when we provide the feedback on our student writing, we will know for sure as a teacher what our student have learned, what our student have understood, and uh, what areas of knowledge our student need to work more on in order to reach the level or to achieve their learning objective. So uh, the follow-up activity uh, can be organized depending on what we uh, see our students need more in order to achieve the learning objective. We can provide a uh, kind of follow-up activity through the learning materials. If you think that your student need to know more about vocabulary, grammar, or writing style, you can give them a material for them to read or to, to learn to do exercises. Or maybe it could also um, be uh, some mini lessons on the kind of uh, patterns you think the student need to master because you found that a lot of them um, could not use that kind of pattern in their writing. You need to uh, kind of give them the mini lessons on such kinds of uh, knowledge the student need to know. And uh, we can even also give them some kind of exercise like reading material I mentioned before in order for them to be familiar with the writing convention, the writing style of a certain child. So uh, those are the kind of elements the teacher needs to have in order to make their feedback effective. So uh, with, this, uh, with this in mind, so how I apply this uh, ask feedback strategy in my um, actual teaching uh, with my uh, student in Thailand. <clears throat> As you see it here, I, I use a combined peer and teacher feedback in uh, teaching uh, three writing courses to my students, writing one, two, and three. And the focus of writing one is on uh, academic uh, paragraph, an academic paragraph. The second one is short composition. The last one is on academic essays. And um, uh, my students are Thai um, pre-service English teacher. It means that they will become uh, the English teachers in the future in Thailand. And now let's get to know more about my Thai student. Okay, uh, for my Thai student, uh, they are 
they did. The, the writing courses with me in the second and third years of study at the university. And in Thailand, English is taught a um, subject uh, from elementary to tertiary level, mm. but usually this subject is taught in Thai by Thai lecturers, sorry, Thai teachers. And um, they usually use own teaching methods like Remus translation. And yes, uh, teachers are the dominant figure in the classroom. And students are usually asked to uh, learn uh, vocabulary or some language structures by heart in order to do the objective uh, test like uh, get feeling or um, reordering the words in the sentence. And um, that, that's why my student had no experience in learning writing, English writing at a skill from their um, secondary schooling. And uh, besides that, although my students are English major students because they will become the English teachers in the future, but when they did the course, the writing courses with me, uh, their level at the about um, three intermediate. And, there were a lot of them in the class, uh, 30 to 40 students. So that's why it took me a lot of time in providing the feedback on their writing. And um, another special thing uh, about my student characteristics, uh, my, my Thai students are exactly like a Thai student in general. They are very passive in the class because in Thailand, uh, students are not expected to be active in order to join the teacher lesson in the class. And another thing that I think um, that's good um, interrupt I mean, make my feedback strategy would not work is that uh, my my student um, or Thai student in general actually their research report in that Thai student in general um, are used to a teacher dominant pedagogy so that's why they believe that they learn only from the teacher they, they don't believe that uh, they can learn from their friends or by themselves so that's why if I ask a student to provide feedback on their friends of writing for sure i get their rejection or maybe it would not work so that's why i use a combined uh, teacher peer and teacher feedback in order to ensure that they can learn from their friend working with their friend is a fruitful way for them to acquire the language and uh, besides that it's reported in the literature on the study of thai student uh, feedback activity they also uh, indicated that thai student in that study in those study refused to give their writing rough to the teachers, oh, sorry, to the student, uh, to their friends, to the peer, for the for the the, the command because they, they did not believe on their friends' ability to provide the feedback on their writing, and uh, they also refused to give the feedback on their friends' writing because they actually uh, that could reflect um, one of Thai's uh, cultural constraint on the need to avoid criticism on others. So that's why maybe Thai students feel it's very strange when they have to say what is good, what is not good on their writing. But with though uh, characteristic, I mean, with uh, my Thai student characteristic in mind, how I apply the ask approach I have just shared with you and um, in my teachings. Okay, so now let's uh, go through what I did. Okay, so I modified the peer teacher feedback strategy in my class and I followed the guidelines by Rollinson 2005. Uh, according to Rollinson, uh, he said that if we want our feedback strategy work, we need to set up and to train the student before we implement it. So, okay, so now let's go, go through how I train. I set up uh, the activity before I implemented them. Okay, so in the setting up state, I make a lot of decisions. Decisions on, I, I told you, I use the peer and teacher feedback. So that's why I have to make a decision on if I want a student to work in uh, with their friends. So how many of them will work? How about my the group size? And uh, how long they work together with their friends? And uh, how can they interact with their friends? How can they interact with me, the teachers? I have to make a decision on certain things. And then I also need to decide on how many drafts I would like my student to write in order to ensure that their writing can be improved. And I also need to decide on what feedback strategy should I use. In the literature, they, they give us a list of a feedback strategies, so which one I should use in order to be um, uh, beneficial to our student, to my student. And then I also think about how I can rate their feedback or their revised version in order to ensure that they take their feedback, I mean, uh, they, the command given on their writing seriously. And besides that, in order to help my student in providing the feedback on their friends or in responding to the feedback, I also repair the guidelines for them to follow. 
And I also um, prepared a follow-up activity. As I share with you, the follow-up activity uh, was developed uh, depending on what we, uh, what I found my students need to work more on in their writing. Okay, so here are the actual things I did. So I asked my students to work in a group of four, and uh, they have to write three raps for each writing. And then the first rap uh, were checked by their friends for sure, followed my guidelines given to them. And uh, the second and the third rap checked by me, the teachers. And then I decided to employ the indirect, unfocused feedback. Indirect means I did not give the student a correction or even their friend when they uh, check up on their peers writing, they just use the code in given, um, in indicating different uh, feedback. And I, I use the unfocused feedback strategy. Unfocused mean I correct on errors found in the writing. Okay. And um, I allow students to use their Thai language in interacting with their friend for peer feedback activity. And they also use language, uh, Thai language to talk to me in verifying the feedback, uh, the command given to them. This means that uh, I allow the student to use their own language in communicating, in sharing, in verifying the, the feedback commands or um, any uh, indication uh, given on their writing in order for them to understand the feedback in order to know how to act upon it. Okay, and um, in order to ensure that the student attended to the feedback given by friends or by teachers, I apply, I decided to deduct one score if I found they, uh, they were irresponsible. It means that they ignore the feedback, they did not respond to the feedback or they did not uh, give the feedback to their friend properly. Okay, I apply, I share with you, I, I have to I have some way in order to make sure that my student take action on the feedback. And when they submit their writing, they also need to submit the summary of their response. This means that they need to know, uh, they need to calculate how many kind of errors they make and how many kinds of, um, how they corrected them. Okay, I will show them in detail later and I will give more explanation about this. They need to sub uh, submit the error summary and then the response summary. Uh, the error of when they see it and the revised wrap to me when they read submit the second or the third wrap. Okay, so now uh, let me show you uh, uh, first the guidelines. Okay, so uh, Okay, uh, hello. Uh, can, can you see my screen, everyone? Yes, hello. it's visible. Yes, yeah, visible. Hello. Okay. Hello. Yeah, you're audible. I'm not sure it works or not. Uh, yeah, I feel like I'm. Hello, uh, it work? Yes, yes. Say. Uh, yes. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, stop unexpectedly. Uh, okay, so, uh, so when I teach the student on uh, pair up writing, uh, writing one, for example, uh, in order for the student to uh, give, provide the feedback on their friends, so I give them the guidelines for them to follow. So uh, you can see in the guideline. I uh, focus on the format, the organization, the content, and the language and mechanic. For language and mechanic, I put them as the last uh, element in the guidelines, and actually intentionally, because I would like my Thai student to know that grammar is not the most important thing in their writing. The other more important things are content organization. Because for my Thai student, they, they used to uh, the own teaching method, so for them, uh, and when talking to them, I when talking to them personally, no, informally, they, they said that uh, in order to have the good writing, they need to be good at grammar, but that kind of wrong conception. So that's why I intentionally put grammar at the last element in the check-in list. And in order for my student to give the feedback on their friend, they simply follow these guidelines. Uh, but I'm, uh, with the question I raised here, and they just read and then uh, check up with their friend's writing. And... Um, these guidelines uh, actually is a kind of um, the reminder uh, to our student in order for them to remember the learning objective. This means that the focus of the class or the writing task in that class is how to write a good paragraph. Okay, and um, in in correcting the student uh, language, I, I use the indirect feedback. Okay, so but for me the indirect feedback I, is the code. I use the code. I 
myself provided the code on the uh, errors, even the friend also use the code in order to make sure that our student, my student know how to use. I use the, what, here. Okay, hello, I hope it's work. It kind of stopped uh, sharing uh, unexpectedly. Uh, so for the uh, correction key, um, because I use the code in providing the feedback on my student, and I also ask my student to use the correction key in providing the feedback, and in order to ensure that my student know how to use them, so I train them. I explain to them what the symbol mean, and then I would the example, and my student learn the correction key before they start uh, providing the feedback on their friend. And uh, let's move on to the, not this one, uh, essay. Uh, so because my writing course also include essay writing, so in order for the student to know what to check, what to focus on their friend's writing, I also give them with the guidelines. And in the guidelines, you can see here, I focus on different things for them to follow. The student, hello, I hope it's work. Seems like it didn't work. Hear you. Yeah, this morning. Yes, I know. Fine. Okay, so um, I also give them the guidelines for them to follow. Okay, as I told you that uh, when the students submit their revised draft, the second and the third draft, they have to submit the summary of their responses. Okay, so now let's move on to, um, okay, not this one, uh, not this one. Okay, the response summary. Can you see everyone? I hope that it's not too small to you. Okay, so when my student um, submit their revised draft, they have to uh, submit with the response summary. So in the response summary, my student have to summarize how many mistakes they made in terms of format, in terms of the content organization. Hello, is, does it work? Yes, Hello. perfect, perfect. Uh, uh, so, um, hello everyone, are you with me? Yes, yes, yes. I feel like it stopped unexpectedly. The sh no, sharing. it's working. Are you with me everyone? Hello. Yes, yes, yes. 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 Hello, Dr. hello. Are, muted, are you so with me? I hope, yes. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Okay, uh, I can see some of you there. Okay, the, the, the screen sharing stopped unexpectedly. So sometimes I was talking, but I didn't know that it didn't move at all. Okay, so now uh, let's continue. So when the student uh, submitted their uh, revised draft, they also have to submit the response summary. So the response summary here, as you can see, there are two parts. The first part is the summary, the summary of the errors. So how many mistakes they make in terms of the format, content organization and language, those are the criteria I put on the guidelines for them when they check their friends' writing, okay? And uh, how many errors, how many mistakes they decided to correct in terms of each criteria? And then how many they decided not to correct? And they have to explain to me why not. So uh, whether they responded to their friend or even their my comment or feedback or not, depending on them, but if they decided not to, they have to give the reason. So doing this, I, I would like to ensure that my student attended to the feedback, to the comment seriously. Uh, okay, that's just my tactic. I'm not sure it worked for your student or not, but it's worked with my student. And the second part of my uh, response summary is they have to summarize the errors. So what they make wrong and then how you, they corrected it. So that's a kind of for them to review. Uh, what they did it wrong and then in order the evidence for them to know oh, how it should be corrected okay so uh, another thing that i, I mentioned to you that beside the response summary my student also need to submit to me this one let me make it big uh, hmm. this one okay this one um the error awareness okay so as you can see here in the paragraph writing my student have uh, they had seven writing writing one two three seven and in each writing they had three wraps 
So when they uh, finish revising, they have to record what kind of error they make. Here you can see here. Also the same, the same kind of criteria from the guideline, format, organization, content, Hello. Okay. Uh, I think you are with me on the Definitely, yes. error awareness. Okay. Yes. So uh, in error awareness, I, I already talked, but I'm not sure you uh, got it or not. So for example here, I would like to show you how I did it in the paragraph writing. In paragraph writing, my students have seven writings. And uh, for each writing, uh, they have to write three graphs. And for each draft, after they finish revising, they have to report. They have to record how many errors they make for format, organization, language. And for each criteria, I have the smaller one. It can be seen here. And this is from the correction key, the symbol. Okay. And they have to report the number of each types of error they make in each rough. And they make the total at the end. And after they finish three rough, they can see how progress they make between the rough of the same writing. And at the end of the course, my student can see how much progress they make from the beginning. It's been first writing until the last writing. And also from the summary at the last column, the student also know that what their, uh, what which area are their witness in order for them to, to work harder, in order to improve um, their themselves for the following writing. Okay. and. Uh, now uh, let's come back to uh, my slides. So after the setting up and uh, I train the students. So in training the student, I explain to them. Hello. Okay, in training the student, I explain to them and I also make use of the first two writing in order for my student to experience how the feedback uh, procedures are going, was going. So now uh, in the training, uh, the main purpose is that to inform the student about the principle of uh, feedback activity, of peer feedback, what they should do, how to do, the objective of this, why we do need to do this, the rationale of the peer and the teacher feedback. And I also need to show my student how they interact in the room. And I also need to show them the basic procedures uh, for providing the feedback, how they locate the errors, how they, uh, what they have to command, how they have to write out. So I did, I make use of the first two writing as a kind of actual practice for my student to, to go through the feedback procedures. And then from uh, writing number three to writing number seven, uh, everything uh, will be recorded and uh, uh, rated. As I mentioned uh, before, I rate it in order to ensure that uh, and my student um, pay attention to uh, to their uh, to the feedback given on their writing. Okay, so now let's move on to the implementing. Oh, I cannot move it. Okay, so the implementing. Uh, I have I have three graphs in the class, right? So in the first graph, my student repaired the writing at home, and then they printed a four copy and printed drop to the class. And in the class, they sit with their friend of their choice. They choose they choose friend by themselves, and uh, they sit in the circle of four. And they work together, and they they commented on their friends' writing one by one. For example, if they decided to comment on the first student writing, four of them commented on that writing at the same time. The first student also commented on his or her own writing. It means that the student commented on the same writing at the same time, but independently they did not talk to each other they were not allowed to talk to each other they just simply read their friends writing follow the guidelines i gave and then um, check what their friend did right what their friend did not get it right independently first and after four of them finished the first commenting on the first draft they talk to each other the purpose of talking after they checking independently is that i would like my student to clarify their comment or the writer need to know what's wrong with their writing in order for them to understand the feedback provided by their friend in order for them to go home and to revive properly because they have to report to me uh, whether they fixed the error or not if they decided not maybe their friend commented uh, wrongly or maybe did not give a useful comment so they can refuse to to fix their writing 
So that's why I would like them to discuss, to clarify the feedback uh, for the writers in order to understand the feedback uh, and to have the action later on the feedback. And in the second draft, my student revised the, the first draft at home in the second draft submitted to me. And as I mentioned already, the summary of the response error awareness and on the first draft were submitted to me. And uh, I marked their writing at home most of the time. The, third, the, the second and the third rap. And uh, why I asked my student to submit it on the first rap commented by their friend to me, or even the second rap commented by myself to me, because I would like to ensure that my student take serious attention to the feedback, because I mark their feedback, I mark their responded to the feedback. So that's why I would like to ensure that they did not ignore any feedback commented their friend. They had the right to refuse not to correct, they, right not to correct but they have to report to me they have to attend it to every feedback so that's why i require them to submit it on the rough even commented by their friends themselves or by me the third rough and uh third rough were checked were rated too okay and uh for the second and the third rough, i usually give them the follow-up activity so now let's see the the basic procedures of my class so uh my class um, uh, we, we uh, in here uh, we have uh, uh, 16 weeks uh, at home, and then uh, we have about two hours. Yeah, that is kind of the ML that the peeps have. Uh, every week, uh, so uh, uh, I spend the first 40 minutes of the class on follow up activity. This means that when uh, we come to the class, they have to report on the their writing, the own writing. Please mute and for the second draft. I check on ready, or maybe the first draft, I will talk to them, and then I ask them to read my comment and to um, clarify, to, to read and to, to ask their friend if some comment they didn't understand. And if their friend could not explain to me, they could come to talk to me in order to make sure that they understand every feedback I give on their writing. Um, that's why uh, I asked them to talk to me in Thai because their, their English level are not so good. So, um, and then I Based on what I learned from uh, checking their writing, I provide the uh, follow-up activities. Uh, I may summarize the common mistake they make or maybe give them exercises to practice on. And then uh, the student um, do the peer feedback on the new rap. And uh, I forgot to mention, students do the peer feedback in the class under my supervision. I walk around to check up on whether the student work or not and to provide what they need. Okay, and the last uh, part of the lesson is to uh, study and then uh, repairing for the new writing for the student to write at home. So uh, those are the steps that I apply in my class um, following the us approach um, and I found very effective. And um, what I learned from my uh, applications, I mean, what I learned from implementing uh, this feedback strategy with my um, Thai student, the first thing I learned is that the student awareness of the effectiveness or the, the usefulness of the feedback activity is very important. Um, because as I mentioned to you, um, especially for a student in Asia uh, who are used to the teacher uh, dominant pedagogies, they, they do not believe that uh, working with friends uh, can help them to acquire the language. So that's why uh, we need to um, make them understanding the importance of working with their friends can help them to learn the language effectively. So that's why we need to, I think for me, I keep reminding my student of uh, the benefit or the resonance of doing the feedback in the class if I, I can have a chance. And um, another uh, lesson I learned from uh, my feedback activity is that I let my students select their own friends because I, I, I knew that um, the student, uh, how much they learn from their friends depend Depended a lot on how much trusted or how 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 much have, how happy they are with their friends. And another lesson I learned is that um, for my uh, Thai student, they are at low level student. But uh, even though I provided them with uh, the guidelines how to provide the feedback on their friend, but I feel like they they tended to focus on checking their friends' grammar only. So that's why if you would like to uh, conduct the feedback activity with your student. You have to make sure that uh, it should be done under your supervision. Uh, like for my Thai student, uh, when they commented on their friend's writing, and they give mainly the feedback on grammar. So I appear, I <laughs> pop in, and then I adjust their feedback behavior. Or I found that when my student um, 
uh, deal with the feedback on uh, lobo errors. I mean that the content, they usually make the confusing uh, suggestion. So that's why um, uh, handling was such issue uh, in time for the student kind of have facilitating the feedback activity in the class. Uh, no, I mean with uh, the student. And then um, although the literature say that um, unfocused feedback is too much for the student because the student cannot manage on of the errors at the same time. Or it, they also is, even say that for indirect feedback, is overload uh, the student um, processing capacity. I mean, language processing capacity. But I found that indirect focus feedback work very well with my student, even though they are at low level student. And I think you still remember what the literature advises us. Indirect feedback uh, should be used with errors and provided by advanced level student. Direct feedback should be used with errors reduced by low uh, level student. But I myself found that indirect feedback work well with my student too. Uh, it's cool because um, I provided them with the mini lessons and I let them verify uh, the feedback, the command, uh, when um, when they found uh, or when, when they uh, fix the error, it means that I require the student to attend it to every feedback uh, given to their friend. Maybe uh, because of that, my student um, became engaged profoundly in finding out what's wrong and how to uh, fix the errors. Um, so, so that's why I feel over the time uh, the, the the errors reduce over the time according to the um, uh, error awareness. So I myself feel like uh, what strategy we use, so this depends on our student characteristic and how we handle it, I think. Okay, so now the next lesson I learned is that uh, if your student are at low level student, uh, you the written one, because I see that a lot of you love to uh, talk to your student about the feedback in the Mentimeters, right? Uh, a big number of you also say that uh, talk to the student about the error, but I, I feel like uh, for low level student, the written feedback work better because it's reduced them off um, the, the, the pressures they have when talking uh, to their teachers or their friend, or they can, um, in, 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 in case that uh, English is not, um, use on their daily basis, it would be kind of disaster for them. And another lesson I learned is that um, A1 plays a very important role in the effectiveness of the feedback because it makes the student understand and being understood in the feedback procedure. So I, I recommend using uh, the first a student first language in the feedback if you would like to you with your student. And actually uh, this uh, also in line with the social uh, cultural theory provided by Landhoff or Vygotsky, I think. Uh, okay, so now uh, the next lesson I learned is that returning the student uh, writing timely encourage them to become engaged in the writing and improving their writing. For me, I return my student writing on the daily, sorry, a weekly basis. And actually it's took me a lot of time and um, patience, even commitment in doing this because uh, I have big class in, in my uh, uh, university. So um, when we return the feedback um, timely, uh, the student, um, uh, what the student wrote in their writing is still fresh in their mind and uh, they, they can, they, they feel like what they um, make the mistake or what they um, miscorrected can be consolidated in the uninterrupted manner. And the last thing I learned is that uh, no matter how we would like to um, help our students, we need a supporting environment, especially with our leaders and our colleagues are also playing a very important role in doing this. So um, for me, uh, I could get this feedback uh, uh, approach uh, done at my university just because I got the support from my chairs. He allowed me to uh, modify the curriculum a little bit uh, allow me to modify it means that i do not need to strictly follow uh, the curriculum this right like uh, teaching one chapter of the book a time a week i i did not follow that but i make sure that i uh, follow the course objective and um, finish the chapter in the course book uh, given by uh, the department okay so uh, that's all i i would like to share with you and uh, for my written feedback strategy i i have also um share in four papers so far. Uh, three of them were on the journals at, uh, were journal, at, at journal article and another one on pub, published in the book, there's a book chapters. And um, 
Now here's uh, uh, some note I would like you to remember uh, from my uh, session today. Um, and you can see that uh, feedbacks is a kind of time consuming activities, but its benefits are undeniable. And uh, in fact, uh, is these instructional techniques is um, um, necessary in in helping in uh, encouraging in motivating our students to to make their writing better, like, like what you share in the first question on my Mentimeter to improve our student writing. And this instructional technique um, is very necessary and I mean that uh, unavoidable. We have to use it. But uh, when we use the feedback on the student, we need to remember that feedback is a conversation. Is it a conversation between maybe the teachers, if you apply the teacher a feedback strategy or the conversation between students if you apply the peer feedback strategy or the combined teacher and feedback strategy is the conversation between all of them together. So in this conversation, uh, the teachers or their peer do not just only diagnose the error, what they got wrong by uh, giving feedback or marking their writing, but this conversation should involve the cycle or maybe many cycles or several cycles of responding and follow-up activity. And these cycles should be done for sure in a long time. It takes us a lot of time, right? And we should be also differentiated according to our student differences. And this could also be done by um, uh, written, I mean, writing or maybe talking, or maybe it can be as a homework, like what I did, I asked my students to do at home. And we need to remember that responding and follow-up activity is the prime time for the students to make progress in their writing, to improve their writing. And this figure also um, show us that how we move from low impact, marking, feedback and effective to, to effective and formative feedback. Okay, so uh, I think you got it. and. Uh, that's, that's what I would love you to share with you. But one another thing I think is also very important is that uh, there's no fit, no way I can say that no best way to revive the feedback, um, the success or the failure of the feedback activities uh, depend a lot on the classroom setting, a lot on our student and learning experience, our student references, our student characteristic. So that's why as a teacher, as a writing teachers, we we need to know our teaching context, we need to know our student characteristic in order to um, modify, in order to adapt the feedback strategies that uh, in, in the way that we can maximize the, the benefit of these in instructional uh, techniques. Okay, so that's that's all for my uh, sharing today. And here's uh, some of the reading I did uh, in sharing with you today. And uh, now I'm happy to answer any question you have. I'm not sure that it's too late now. What time is it? <coughs> it's over? Okay. Uh, it's I think in Thailand it's the seven thirty-two. Uh, are you still with me? Yes, yes, yes. Uh, okay, so let me see what you wrote here. How can we act the feedback? All right. Uh, of time and curriculum practically. Uh, okay, thank you. Uh, wonderful, impressive. Thank you. Okay, so um, I refer to uh, uh raise the question uh, in order for me to hear because I cannot read or not. Yes, yes. So, let's uh, let's do one thing, friends. Uh, if you have any queries, please yes, ask one by one. Okay. Um. The facilitator, can you help me? Uh, uh, yes. Yes. Here is the question: If the participant are raised, can you? Ma'am, uh, yeah, there is a question by Ralal Kapar. Okay. So, any questions so far, everyone? Hello. Hello. I think Dr. Loon, can you hear me? Hello. Hello. You are audible, sir. Okay. Oh, no, Dr. Loan is not hearing, I think. Yeah. Maybe. Maybe. No question? Yes, he's not hearing. So the, let's write I some. What Hello. Okay. Can you write down Can you write down something in chat? Sure I'm muted, Anna. Uh, yes. No, sir. She's audible. She's speaking. I know, but she's, she's not hearing. She's not listening. Hello. Write Hello. down there, sir, to her. Uh, no, I don't hear anything. Sorry. No. That's why oh. I'm just trying to say hello, hello. Okay. Uh, hello, no. everyone. Uh, Can you hear now? Dr. Lone, can you hear us? Hello, I, I don't hear anything. Uh, now you can hear? Hello? Hello, Dr. Lone. Hello? Can you hear us? Hello? 
Okay. Oh. Uh, no, I don't hear anything. So sorry. Okay, then what to do? Uh, no. uh, no. She is not muted. No, no, she is unmuted. Yeah. Actually, what did happen? Didn't know. Oh, Dr. Lone, can you hear us? I think she should oh. rejoin once. Any question for me? Yes, uh, yeah. many questions. Thank you very much. Let's write a, write a message to her, I think. Uh, we have to write. Ma'am? Uh, yes, I'm Dr. right. Lone, can you hear the participants now? No, no, no she's no. not. Yeah, but I, I cannot, I cannot hear you. I cannot hear anything. Dean, sir, how about asking her to rejoin? John, which means I need to get out and then get back? Yeah, yes, yes. Uh, okay, let's write to her. Let me I, 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 I just wrote for her, I just wrote. Okay, okay. She said I'll come. Yes, she'll come again. Yes, she went and she'll come, I think. Okay, she's there. She's there. Hello. Okay, now she can hear, I think. Dr. Lone? Uh, Dr. Lone, can you hear us now? Can you hear me, everyone? Yes, yeah, yeah. you can hear us. Oh, I still don't hear anyone. I just don't hear anything. Hello? Oh my God, what happened then? Can We can, we can listen you well. So what option is left then now? Not anything. Uh, Only writing option. Now she has to read the questions. Keyboard shortcut. Dian sir, at least, Dian sir, at least, at least let us let let's convey to her that we can hear her well. At least let's convey yes. to that. Already Hello. conveyed, sir. No, she so doesn't seem type, to be uh, listening to us, so uh, let's write on the chat box. Read it now because Even she's not uh, receiving so our message, I think. So far, Only one absent, ma'am. How listen. come it happened? You cannot. Oh, yeah, it's true. But I cannot listen to you. So what should I do now? Can someone show me how to solve this problem? I think better to give question about writing, I think. What uh, is it? Okay, uh, if you have any question, uh, maybe you can type here. Uh, yeah, I think it's better. Because I cannot hear you, but um, you said that you can hear me clearly. Oh, friends, write down okay. your questions now. Okay, so please uh, type your answer here. So I, I try to answer um, your question as much uh, to understand that. Uh, I know, but uh, let's see what, what you ask me now. Uh, which type of feedback should be given to the student if a teacher yeah. teach? using inductive methods. Oh. Okay, so let me go back uh, to the question. Thank you very much. So which type of feedback uh, should be given to the student if the teacher inductive methods? You are mute. Oh. So in inductive methods, do you mean that you are teaching in the own way, a uh, Ramos translation or what way? Hello, Dr. Loon, are you speaking? Yeah, uh, your question is that how can we give written feedback to the student in last class under resource uh, last room? Uh, yes, uh, actually uh, for my class, as I share with you, uh, they are they, they are for 30 to 40 students in the class, but I could manage to uh, provide a feedback on, on, on their writing, not, until, not only once time, but two times 
on each writing. So as I share with you, it took me a lot of time, a lot of energies, and actually great com commitment in order to fulfill that task. It's, it's really hard work for me uh, when I check a lot of student writing uh, every week. Yeah, it's true. Um, it takes a lot of time. OK, let me check back with the reverse question. Uh, oh, I cannot see a lot of questions now, so just. Uh, OK, you cannot hear us, yes. I cannot, OK, so any, any other question, everyone? Uh, Do you, can you listen to us? No, Susan. I cannot read the reverse question. Uh, what should I do? Uh, no, uh, she's so not uh, listening to us. Ron, the reverse question. Okay. Uh, any more questions? I cannot read here. Only. Okay. Uh, there are many more questions, but we cannot. Uh, you cannot listen us. This is the problem. A uh, technical I problem. I cannot read the reverse question. Sorry. Okay. So how can we connect then? Uh, uh, we, we can make a messenger call. Okay, I have a question. Let me do that. Okay, so you please start it. Okay. A student learn from their mistakes. Yes, that's why we teachers need to, to give the feedback to them. It's meant to show them what they were wrong, that what they get wrong. What is it here? Uh, like she's not receiving my phone. Sorry. Uh, what is it here? I think she went. She will join again, I think. Uh, Dr. Lone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay, I can, I can hear you now. Oh, that's Yes, good. so from here now. we'll do so. They will ask the questions and you'll uh, just um, please answer their queries. Please ask questions, friends. I think Puspaji has a question there. Puspaji? Uh, so uh, I can hear you now. I think you're sharing your screen, so will you please stop it for a while? Yeah, okay, let, let me let me turn the zoom again because I was out already. So let me turn this again. Okay, okay. try it. Okay. okay, okay. Otherwise, we'll just ask the question from Messenger. <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah, they can help me. I give them the email so they can even email me if they want. Yes, uh, but actually, interaction is necessary also. Many questions are there from the friends, if possible, or otherwise, we could see. Actually, you have joined again. So, any of you now, let's see. Let me turn it again. Oh, so sorry. Uh, let's try it. Again. I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> I, think, I think you can hear me now, right? Yes, 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 of course. Okay. Thank you very much. Okay. Okay. Hello. Now you can hear? Oh, yes. Very clear. Yeah. Sorry. That's good. Okay, then, please. <laughs> What's the technical problem, huh? <laughs> So now uh, anyone can ask. Just raise your hand and ask question. Here is a uh, reaction there. You can raise your hand and ask. Uh, yes. Santos Sanba, maybe you have a question. No, I think he doesn't have. Anyone else? Navara, sir? Binu, sir? Binu, no. sir? Yes, yes, sir. Yes, yes. Yeah, I had one question, and uh, uh, before uh, just uh, two, three minutes, there was a technical problem in audio. That's why I wrote there in okay. the uh, chat box. Okay. And mm -hmm. Dr. Lone has already given the, given the uh, feedback. That's uh -huh. why it is not necessary to ask any more questions from us. Okay. Yeah. So okay, if you have you. many friends, I think they have questions. Actually, I, first I saw a lot of questions, but later I could not run up, you know, so I, I could mm. not read them from here. So sorry. And I'm really sorry for the technical thing on. So I try my best, but I could not hear you. So, so sorry. Okay, but that's fine. Yeah, thank you. Okay, any more questions? 
actually they raise a lot of questions in the chat box, but the problem is that I cannot see them. Yes, the <laughs> cannot run up now. I'm so sorry about that. Okay. So maybe uh, so. if if you are still um, uh, I would like to ask the question, you can even write to me. I think can you see my screen with the email? I think Hira has a yeah. question. Hiraji, hmm. what is the question? Hira Laji is waiting to ask question. I think he has written something there. Okay. Uh, in the post method era, where it is said that students learn from their mistakes, which types of feedback would you, uh, would be better for teachers as well as students to be gi given? Right. Either positive or negative feedback. This is what his question is. I think actually the question already answered the question. Student learn from their feedback. It means that the student need to give the feedback to the student, right? In order for them to know what's wrong, in order to learn from that feedback, right? So yes. I think uh, the, the, the one who wrote the question already have the answer. Okay? Okay. All right. Any questions, friends? Only I have good remarks, dear sir. Yes, sir. Please, please put your remarks. Okay, thank you, Dean sir. Congratulations, Dr. Loan. Okay, so thank you very much for your joining me here tonight. Uh, also, thanks a lot for your generosity and for being kind enough to accept the invitation. And yes, for your pretty much effective presentation on how to provide effective feedback on a student's writing. All the way you presented from Thailand, indeed, uh, this is what learning beyond borders is always possible. And your presentation today was its evidence. In a sense, your presentation was practical for us. You involved in uh, involved the participants quite often in the beginning. I really like that part. I got very special input about giving feedback to our students from you today. Hopefully, other participants were also benefited equally from the presentation. Uh, thank you once again for shedding more light on a topic of a great concern of all the teachers in general and English language teacher practitioners in particular. Many thanks to all the participants as well for their questions. Uh, thank you. Thank you all. Yeah, thank you very much for your nice work. Yeah, it's my uh, actually great honor to be included in this virtual conference. And I really hope that my presentation could be useful to you and uh, just give you some idea of how we teachers, right? The teachers can modify our feedback strategy according to our student characteristic in order to help them the best we can. So that, that's, that's the only my purpose in sharing uh, my uh, feedback strategy today. And I hope you can... Uh, have some idea for your uh, for feedback strategy used in your own teaching context. Okay, so uh, Surendra, anything to share? Uh, yeah, <clears throat> yeah. Congratulations, congratulations, Dr. Rohan. Oh, so you. here are uh, a few friends who are asking uh, you to pronounce your no name once because they are they feel difficult to pronounce your name. They have this written in my personal chat box. So will you please pronounce your name? My name is Lon. Lon. That's my first name. Okay. Full name. First first name, uh, Lon. But the full name Win Thi Thi Lon. Okay. Okay. Thank you, ma'am. I think they they uh, listed it. Uh huh. Just uh, call me Lon. That that's that's fine. Okay. Just call okay. me Lon. That's my first name, and I refer. Oh. Okay. Yeah. That's Two of my right. friends from Katmandu University. They want to uh, just uh, listen your name uh, because they feel difficult to pronounce it. Thank you so much for your wonderful oh, presentation. You so Okay, thank okay. you. Uh, thank you, Surendra, Pusparaji, Dawadi Shar, and all the Binuji and all the friends for being with us today. It's a wonderful session. Uh, and Dr. Lone, uh, we are highly thankful to you for your presence here with us. And in say, you know, the timely issue you shared us, you know, writing is the toughest, you know, the uh, skill if we talk about the four language skills. Uh, you know, this, it's a reiterative process, recursive process. Even one writing can be made better even after seven or eight writings. So this is what the thing, quite tough. And particularly in case of English as a second language or foreign language countries and the writing, the, the thing that the um, L1 speakers, English as a mother tongue speakers speak in seven or eight words, we use 21 to 30 words for writing one sentence. This is what the problem of writing in our context. So it's a timely issue for us, very timely issue. And what I was, you know, thinking of, expecting, and the same thing I got from you, 
and i know i'll be learning more from you days to come as well and we all will be learning more from you yes and the scholars association of nepal uh, is you know highly obliged to you you know for your presence and this, this sharing to all the friends around here and if anyone wish to watch it you can watch it in youtube as well we have recorded in live is going on there so many bangladeshi friends are watching there from bangladesh uh, where in these are uh, so uh, you will be uh, soon you'll be awarded with the certificate of the speaker as well electronically you'll be sending it and days to come let's one form such a platform again and come together for sharing because the knowledge is the matter of sharing and caring this is what i think yes okay. thank you so much lord okay thank you thank you very much thank you very thank much you. everyone for your participation and thank you thank for you. the platform sharing and learning from each other thank you thank you thank you very much thank you and tomorrow we have two more sessions the one session by dr uh, jairaz or professor jairaz avasti and another session will be by uh, mr surendra oja is the nelta vice president of province seven and the papson central committee vice chair as well so he will be giving the session on teachers well being totally it's not all well being about uh, religious well being he will be talking in, uh, in detail about uh, how the teacher can remain well in in such epidemics or other places for example right now i'm out of well being yeah dr lon sometimes says sleep also you need well being so this is what happens here <laughs> so thank you thank you so much we'll meet again tomorrow at, at 3:30 oh. thank you so much thank you namaste namaste thank you bye bye all okay bye 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 everyone bye bye, bye friends see you tomorrow see you tomorrow so shall i shall i end it sure sure dn yo hamro recording gari kaha rakhi rakhnu bhacha yo recording youtube ma cha you will get it you just see the youtube's also there are youtube videos also you just forward it to your friends and they will see here and you can see don't worry yeah sure i'll be i'll be i'll be thank you dn sir it went all well thank you so much pushpa sir you know pushpa ji i saw one or what is the name that pancha something sir i think I yesterday think... also i say i i have to learn many things from my senior like uh, dn sir so how perfect and how mature he is yeah so yeah. i have a many many thanks sir over sora sori hurka ne bela mat chirnu bhar koi koi le no aina aina tara thank you sir thank you